can you truly rank the best food in Disney's Epcot, the park known for their food? Today we're gonna try it out and I hope that you're hungry. When it comes to dining in Disney World, things can get actually pretty overwhelming with all of the different options and price points. So today we're gonna be hanging out in Epcot to tell you what is and is not worth your money when it comes to eating in arguably the most foodie park in all of Disney. All right, starting us off, we are here in the UK to talk about the UK beer cart. Unfortunately, it's technically bottom of the list. So while I do enjoy this beer cart, we have to acknowledge there are only two beers and one cider here. Like that's the whole menu. I just read you the entire menu. Despite my love for the cider, it can't go high and you just have to acknowledge that it's just not anything compared to the pub, which is literally feet away. There are zero reviews on AE for the UK beer cart, but I'm gonna give it a one cider out of five because I love the cider, so I won't give it a zero, but could be better. Second up on our list here in America Pavilion is Block and Hans. So this walk-up stand is called Block and Hans. This is where you can grab some IPAs, some Pilsners, some ales, just a handful of things. There's even a beer flight though. Uh, they also have Mickey pretzels, which is pretty nice options. It is a bit boring. I do think that there are some better beer options throughout Epcot. Um, and for that reason, I understand why you guys did not leave any reviews on All Ears. I don't think there's ever been a reason why I've stopped here. There are better drink options. There's more variety. There's just several more places that I would recommend you go to and for that I'm gonna give it zero bald eagles out of five There's just it's, if you're a beer lover stop by but there are better beer options Especially in places that we're gonna talk about in just a minute now sadly our next uh, snack stand that we're talking about is this one right here behind me that is unfortunately a little bit um, forgotten we'll say and this is the land cart outside of the land pavilion which is that way so this is the land car. It is semi-boring, to be totally honest with you guys, but it's really helpful for people who are trying to avoid the deep fried and sugary snacks for every single meal in Disney World. You can get a fruit and cheese plate here, a veggie plate, Mickey-shaped pretzel. You can actually get frozen beverages here as well. And honestly, this sounds pretty good to me right now. Now, weirdly, I think that the fruit and cheese plate and the veggie plate actually sound pretty darn good from here. They're just simple. And it's one of those moments where you've been in Disney World for a few days and you think, I need a vegetable. I've not had any healthy snacks in probably years. This is gonna be a great spot for you. So although it's boring and it's a little bit low on our list, I'm gonna give it three carrots out of five because sometimes you do need this despite what you want in Disney World. All right, now fourth from the bottom is Refreshment Station out here by Test Track. So here we are, this is a refreshment station. It actually recently reopened from a re uh, kind of lengthy refurbishment where they added some benches, they added a few updates to it. The main thing that you're gonna find here is frozen slushies. So you get to choose your flavor, Coca-Cola or Fanta Banana, you get to choose your toppings, there's some candies, there's caramel, there's blueberry. They will often have kind of specialty items. Sadly, there are no snacks, so that's why it is lower here on our rankings than others. It's a nice place to cool down, especially if it's really, really hot and you just need a break. Now I will say it has just reopened. However, thanks to the festival and other things, it hasn't been open every single day, so there's no guarantee that it will be open um, in what time. It varies a little bit, but still a good place to get a frozen coat because everyone needs one, especially in your gremlin hour. Alrighty friends, for our next stop, we are here at Fife and Drum in the America Pavilion. Now honestly, in my opinion, you could argue that this is the most divisive spot on the entire list. And if you don't know anything about it, that might be confusing to you because they do have slushies, popcorn, Mickey pretzels, hot dogs. But what makes it divisive, you ask? The turkey leg. Now the turkey leg started as a Magic Kingdom Disneyland iconic snack and um, it kind of stayed that way. It, it remains in the conversation, but most people don't like it. Weirdly, I like it. Um, it's hard for me to say, it's hard for me to admit. I've had a lot of them recently, but most people don't, and I respect that and I understand it. Now you guys have not reviewed Fife and Drum over on all ears, so I'm sadly gonna give it two turkey legs out of five. I'm being generous, but anything that has a frozen Coke is gonna get a little extra point from me, and frankly, I kind of like the turkey leg. I don't know. Don't come for me on that one. 
Next up on our rankings list, let's talk about Connections Cafe. This one is a little bit different considering we are calling it a snack stand. Um, there is actually seating in this Starbucks, which is very different than all of the other ones we've talked about, but the other ones in our last ranking videos have landed in snack stands, so we're gonna keep it here for now. So if you weren't aware, this is Connections Cafe, and this is actually the Starbucks here in Epcot. Often it will have one specialty item, like the Liege Waffle, for example, right now, it is food and wine, so it's the Remy Liege Waffle, or they even have the new multi-layered cake treat. Sadly, it is not super special. I mean, I love a good Starbucks, but you can't claim that it has any Disney special items here. There really are just the two things, and pricing-wise, it's a little bit higher than other options that you can find throughout the park. Unfortunately, on All Ears, there are no reviews, so in my own review, Starbucks-wise, I'm going to give it a zero Starbucks out of five because it's my least favorite Starbucks in all of the Disney Starbucks options. All right, next up on our snack stands list, we are here at the Popcorn Cart in Canada. And that's the whole name, Popcorn Cart in Canada. So this is where you're gonna find the famous maple popcorn. And honestly, I don't feel like I need to say much more. You can grab a beer or even an Ottawa apple drink, which is pretty nice. And you can grab some maple popcorn as well. Very tasty, very simple, but pretty unique. Now it does have zero reviews over on allears.net. Make sure you're reviewing, of course, but to me, I enjoy it. Not my favorite though, so I'm gonna give it two maple leaves out of five. Next up on our list is the famous funnel cake stand between America and Japan. So this stand has funnel cakes, funnel cakes, and did I mention funnel cakes? It's your traditional deep fried funnel cake. They also have some specialty cakes too, depending on the festival and what it's here for. They're actually pretty solid. So right now they have the candied bacon funnel cake for food and wine. Um, it's just pretty plain though. That's all you're gonna find here is funnel cakes. You guys have not reviewed this one over on All Ears, but I have really enjoyed the cakes that I do get here, so I'm gonna give it three deep fryers out of five. Le Vin de Chef de France is a walk-up stand where you can grab some of the best frozen slushies in all of Epcot, in my opinion. This is where you're gonna find kind of what we think are a little bit iconic here in Epcot, like the Orange Grand Marnier slush, or the, even the Citrion Grey Goose slush. It's really good. If there were more options, I would give it a higher personal ranking, but unfortunately, I can only give it three frozen slushies out of five. So next up on our walk-up list, we're gonna talk about Wine Keller, and this one's kind of a strange addition. So Wine Keller is technically a store if you go and look at Disney's website, but you can kind of count this as a walk-up because you can grab beer, wine, and the incredible Mozart liquor in chocolate or in pumpkin spice, which is traditionally a seasonal option. They have some incredibly tasty drinks, that is true, but you know, without a food list, it can go too high on the list. Now there are no reviews on the all ears site because again this is kind of technically a store but for my rating i'm gonna give it two chocolate shots out of five now you may or may not notice but this isn't even open while i'm filming this and that's because it's not open year round and that's why it can't be any higher on the list the pizza that you can get at this walk up is actually really delicious you can even grab some wine beer sandwiches as well but it's not always open now there are not any reviews for this one over on the all ears website i am going to review it i've been doing I've been feeling a pasta vibe, but for this one, I'm gonna have to go pizza. I'm gonna give it one slice out of five because it's not open enough. It, it's good, it deserves to be more loved. For our first stop in Japan, we're gonna stop by Kabuki Cafe right here at the entrance. So this is where you're gonna find some Japanese shaved ice and sushi, as well as some sake slushies. There's also plum wine, Japanese beers, and just plain sake if you're not in the slushy mood. It is a pretty nice spot, although it's pretty easily overlooked, even though the shaved ice is really sweet and tasty. Now Kabuki Cafe actually does not have any reviews over on all ears, but I'm gonna give it a solid three shaved ices out of five shaved ices. Is that right, shaved ices? Alrighty, next up on our ranking is over here at Refreshment Outpost. So Refreshment Outpost sits between China and Germany. Um, it has hot dogs, frozen slushies, and you can occasionally get Dole Whip here. Um, that's amazing. Getting Dole Whip anywhere is kind of a win for us. Now this spot will often have specialty items depending on the festival as well, which just makes it a little bit more exciting. However, there are no reviews on all years for this one, so my review is gonna be two and a half Dole Whip out of five. Next up, we are here in Morocco for Oasis Sips and Sweets. It's kind of hard. Can you say that five times fast? Oasis Sips and Sweets. Oasis Sips and Sweets. I couldn't do it once. 
So Oasis, oh my gosh, now I'm, <laughs> I'm tongue tied. Oasis Sweets and Sips is the walk up kind of snack stand here in the Morocco Pavilion. It's where you're gonna find things like pistachio baklava, almond crescent cookies. They have some frozen cocktails. They even have some sangria and blood orange mimosas. Now this one is simple, but it's actually pretty delicious. I know that I've gotten the baklava before and it's very, very tasty and nice with a honey flavor and then crispy with the pistachios. I'm a fan. All of that to be said though, this spot is kind of easily skippable, I would say. There's a lot of amazing options and this one is only kind of middle of the road for me. It has zero reviews over on all ears and I'm probably gonna give it two slices of baklava out of five. Next up on our list, we are talking about Gelateria Toscana. And is that Quincy? Oh my goodness, Quincy? Is that, is that Quincy from all ears? What are you doing? She's what? in hiding. What are you doing here? What is everyone doing? So here at this yummy little walk-up stand, we are going to talk Italian gelato. There is lots of it. There are some pastries, there are some floats, but mainly you are here for the gelato. It's very tasty, but unfortunately I can't really ignore the price point. The cheapest ice cream you're gonna find here is about $8.50. And while that doesn't sound that bad, it's a little bit more than compared to say Edie's for $6.75 over at Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. Now there are no reviews for this one over on All Ears, but I'm gonna give it three gelato scoops out of five because I just really think it's tasty. It's a little bit more pricey, but the quality is there too. Next up for walk-up stands, something that made it kind of surprisingly high on the list in my opinion is Joy of Tea over here in China. So Joy of Tea is actually a really simple walk up here in China. You can grab some tea, boozy drinks, or even some egg rolls. They are just at $5 for two of them. They are $5.25. It's pork with vegetables. They're such good egg rolls. Honestly, that price kind of reminds us of a Disney World that has long since been forgotten. So in honor of that, in honor of them caring about our financial wallets, we're putting this one pretty high. Thank you to the egg rolls. Now there were no reviews on all ears for this one, so I'm gonna give it my review as we're hanging out. I'm gonna give it two egg rolls out of five because that's how many you can get here, and I really appreciate that. All right, after our stop at Joy of Tea, we have made our way over here to Chosa de Margarita back in the Mexico Pavilion. So this has walk-up margaritas, it has tacos, tostadas, and even some empanadas. It's deliciously underrated in our opinion, but it's right next to La Cava del Tequila, so unfortunately, ends up a little bit lower on the list of just how impressive it is. You guys have not reviewed this one over on All Ears, so I will review it for us right now here in the moment. I'm gonna give it three margaritas. Now we are back in Germany to talk about Summerfest right over here, which is another walk-up stand that you can buy in Germany. So Summerfest is a quick service walk-up that you actually can mobile order from, which is actually surprisingly rare in Epcot. This is where you're gonna find amazing items like the pretzel bread pudding, and frankly, that's what puts it so high on the list. But you can also find bratwurst and beer as well, and even a jumbo pretzel, if that's what sounds good to you. The pretzel bread is delicious, and that's what makes it so high on the list, even though there's not that many food options here. If you haven't ever tried it, you have to try the pretzel bread pudding. It's so incredibly sweet and savory because of the pretzels and the bread pudding. It's amazing. You guys like it too, and you gave it a 7.92 out of 10 over on the website. I'm about to make a crazy decision. I'm giving it four pretzel breads out of five for pretzel bread alone. And also because my brother likes it here and I get to make up my rankings. We're gonna talk about crepes et porté, and it's raining. So this walk-up is crepes et porté. It's a walk-up crepery. I mean, what more can you ask for? There are three different galettes and three sweet crepes here, as well as some mimosas, and I've eaten all of them and enjoyed all of them. If you're curious about that, you can go check out our Eat Everything France video, where I'm gonna talk about all the restaurants we're mentioning today as well, and you can get full reviews on all of the crepes and galettes. You can also find some ciders and wines here as well. There were no reviews for this one on AE, but I really like it, so I'm gonna give it four crepes out of five. For number three on our list, we are over here in Norway at Kringla Bakery. I don't know why I said it that way. Kringla Bakery, sorry. <laughs> So here at Krinkla Bakery Old Cafe, this is kind of an iconic spot for Epcot snacks. You can find things like the Viking coffee, the school bread, rice cream, and a flatbread rolled with cinnamon sugar and butter. Oh my goodness. 
even just stepping inside this location, it smells amazing. The spot is always delicious and honestly a must do in our opinion, especially if you're here in between festivals. You guys gave this one 8.7 out of 10 over on All Ears. I'm gonna give it a four school breads out of four school breads. That's a pretty good amount of school bread. Le Artisan de Glace is where you're going to find some incredible artisan ice cream and sorbet. It's really incredible, but also you're going to find the macaron ice cream sandwich, the croque glace, cafe glace here, which are just incredible and so unique, especially to this location. There are 16 different flavors here, but also you're going to find the ice cream martini here. And I really don't think I need to say that much more. Now I have to say this is rated 10 out of 10 over on allears.net. However, I have to say that's only one review. You, so I didn't really take that fully into account on the ranking, but still pretty darn good. For my own ranking, I'm giving it four ice cream cones out of five because it's delicious, but sometimes the ice cream martini doesn't mix super well. So taking away a point. For our number one spot for snack stands, we have to come to the sweetest girl in Epcot, and that is Caramel Kusha. So you probably don't realize it, but when you think of snacks in Epcot, you're probably thinking of this location right here and you might not even realize it. So right here in Caramel Kusha is where you're going to find the famous caramel popcorn with the Werther's Caramel. It lives here as well as some incredible whoopie pies, caramel flights, caramel butter bars. And honestly, what else is caramel? You name it, it's probably here. And it's easy to say, but it is sweet to be number one. You guys gave this location an 8.86 out of 10. I'm gonna have to give it five caramel popcorns out of five. For the first lounge we're gonna talk about today, let's talk about Tutto Gusto, the wine cellar. So here we are, this is Tutto Gusto Wine Cellar. They have several small plates, wines, pastas, which has my heart, and even some entrees here as well. But the best thing about this is the extensive drink list and that there's a grab and go bar. Uh, it's not super popular, but it can be pretty tasty and it might surprise you if nothing else is looking tasty on your menu or there's not a ton of availability anywhere. Now, when it comes to Italian, we definitely are gonna rank it higher than say Tony's over in Magic Kingdom, but it's nothing that we're really obsessed with. With as far as like our team goes. You guys gave this a 6.41 out of 10 over on the website. I'm probably gonna give this one one and a half pasta plates. I'm sticking with a, I feel like a pasta theme in Italy is gonna work out well. For our second best lounge here in Epcot, we have come over towards Mission Space, but we're not here for the ride. No, we're here to head to space still, but in a little bit of a different way. So inside Space 220 Restaurant is where you're gonna find the second from the bottom lounge, which is the Space 220 Lounge. You get to head into one of the most immersive experiences in all of Walt Disney World just by stopping in this lounge. It is so nice because it allows you to try out some of that food from Space 220 without doing the prefix menu. Now, do not get me wrong, it is still very pricey to come hang out in the lounge on its own, but the food is pretty tasty and it's less expensive than the restaurant if you want that immersion, if you want to have that experience without really spending all of the money. So on All Ears, you guys gave this lounge a 7.31 out of 10, which is actually pretty good. It's a nice little ranking. And for me, I'm probably gonna give it two and a half planets out of five planets. I think it's good. Still hard to avoid that price. And the walk-up list can fill up really quickly because you cannot make reservations for the lounge, but I'm not hating. So we're gonna give it 2.5 planets out of five. This is the biggest party in Epcot and I'm not joking. So this is the Rose and Crown Pub. Oftentimes, especially on uh, St. Patrick's Day, you're gonna find a line out the door here. They have tons of specialty drinks like the Welsh Dragon, the Leaping Leprechaun, and even more. They have an amazing beer selection and you can grab a Scotch whiskey and some flights as well. You guys gave this one a 7.59 out of 10. I'm gonna give it four ales out of five because it's wonderful, but if you're not a super beer drinker, you're kind of limited here, which is just me, and that's a bias ranking. Alrighty, so we finally have made it to our number one lounge, and you guys already knew what it was before I even started because this is the king of lounges, La Cava del Tequila. When you talk about Epcot royalty, I can promise you're probably talking about the queen of Epcot and that is La Cava del Tequila. It has tequila flights, incredible margaritas, queso, guac, and more if you go in for the seating. And there's even a great walk-up bar for the great margaritas. I highly recommend considering waiting for a table. They are first come, first served to get the snacks, but you can also just grab a drink and go. 
you guys gave this one a 9.7 out of 10 over on All Ears. That's absolutely fair. I'm gonna give it five out of five margaritas because this is absolutely the best place to grab one in the World Showcase and it's the number one lounge. All right, to start us off with quick services, we're at what I think is probably the worst one, Connections Eatery. Now, Connections Eatery is up here towards the front of the park and actually does have a connection, huh, connection, actually does connect with Connections Cafe. It is easily the largest quick service in Epcot. They have burgers and pizza, chicken sandwiches, a few fancy-ish salads. Uh, unfortunately, though, compared to the rest of the items in Epcot, it just really does not stand out. Not the best, not the worst but lots of indoor seating, which can make a big difference. Sadly, this location has zero reviews over on all ears. Make sure to go leave a review, by the way. Um, so I'm gonna give it my own review, and I'm gonna say zero connections out of five, because I'm just not feeling a connection with the location, with the food, so zero out of five. All right, next up on our quick service list, we are gonna talk about the Lotus Blossom Cafe, which is right here behind me in China. Unfortunately, this quick service just doesn't hold a candle to the others. It's not bad. The portion sizes are actually really nice for the orange chicken, Mongolian beef, and chicken fried rice, especially for the price. If you're hungry and you want to get a good bang for your buck, Lotus Blossom Cafe is actually gonna be a pretty good stop, but quality-wise, it just doesn't compare to the others. However, I will say it's not a bad option, and there have been plenty of times that I've chosen to eat here just because it sounded really good. It's a good option for Chinese food. You guys gave this one a 6.55 out of 10 over on all ears. I think I'm probably gonna give this one two lotus blossoms out of five. Next up on our list of quick services, we are gonna talk about Katsura Grill back here in the Japan Pavilion. So what I think is probably the prettiest uh, outdoor setting and just vibes here, this quick service is a lot of fun. It has ramen, udon, sushi, and even some miso wings. I actually like this spot quite a bit. It's a little bit um, more forgotten, I guess, because it's kind of here in the back, but they even have curry and teriyaki plates. I really love this place. Uh, I don't normally come here. I'm much more of a festival food eater, but in between festivals, this is a quick service you'll find me at quite a bit. It's really nice. You guys gave it a 7 out of 10 over on all ears, but I'm going to give it, for my biased rating, I'm going to give it four pieces of sushi out of five. Yeah, I am. All right, we've made it over to Mexico for our next in the quick service lineup, and that is La Cantina de San Angel. Did I say it wrong? I can't say that. It's, I'm, it's good. It's I'm good. trying really hard. I have my coach with me. So this is a fan favorite quick service for a reason. It has the classics, tacos, nachos, empanadas, churros, and even a churro sundae. It's good and consistent. Now it's really nice, pretty good quality, and you guys gave it a 7.46 out of 10 over on the All Ears reviews. Uh, for me, I think I'm gonna give it three tacos out of five because I like the tacos here a lot, I like the nachos here, but I don't stop here a lot. Coming in fourth place, we are here at the Yorkshire County Fish Shop. I said Yorkshire County Fish Shop in a bad accent in case you couldn't understand what I said. Now the Yorkshire County Fish Shop is actually an all ears team favorite. It's simple but perfect and sometimes that's all you need in your life. It's fish and chips and that really is about it. They do have some cuties if you want some cuties. They have some Joffrey's coffee, some tea, and two um, draft beers but that's about it. It's $12.99 for a portion size and you get lots of chips and two big flaky pieces of fish so we can't pass up how good of a deal that is for that kind of portion size. Now, as much as I love this one, it can't go super, super high on the list because there's really only one option which limits it, but it's a good option. You guys gave this one an 8.61 out of 10. I am giving it five fish and chips out of five fish and chips because I love it here. All right, for our number three and our top three for quick services, we're stopping by Sunshine Seasons, which is here in the Land Pavilion. So Sunshine Seasons is a quick service that has a ton of variety here inside the Land Pavilion. Um, there's rotisserie chickens, there's stir-fried entrees, there is oak grilled salmon, you can get breakfast here, you can get roast beef sandwiches, birria tacos. I mean, the list goes on and on. There is even an Asian vegetable noodle salad that I have personal, strong, positive feelings about. I truly could go on for ages over here. Now, I really like this option. I think it's great, especially if you are with a big group or you have picky eaters. It gives everybody a lot of variety and it kind of is convenient because you can get a lot of different types of food in one location. You guys gave it an 8.08 .08 out of 10 over on all ears and I'm gonna give it a five out of five sunshines because I like it and I appreciate variety. 
We are back in America for what is the number two best quick service in all of Epcot, and that's Regal Eagle Smokehouse. Now, Regal Eagle, if you've never heard of it, you absolutely should have by now. It is incredible. It's craft, drafts, barbecue, absolutely incredible loaded fries, and more. The quality is so great. It's a really nice portion size as well, and there's a pretty large indoor seating area with great AC. Plus, it's technically Muppet themed, thanks to Sam Eagle. And frankly, that's gonna get it points in my book. Now over on the website, you guys gave it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. I'm gonna give it five out of five Sam Eagles. It's so good, and barbecue might sound a little bit plain, but when it comes to quick services, this is a great one. We finally have made it to the number one quick service here in Epcot, and I'm standing right outside of Léal. So here in the France Pavilion, our number one option is gonna be Léal Boulangerie, Patisserie, Cafe, Boutique, and Cadeau. This is amazing. Now, there are some shopping items when you first walk inside, but it's really the quick service here in the back that is a standout. This is one of our favorite quick services for breakfast, which is actually one of the few breakfast options in Epcot. Lunch or dinner, though, there is nothing here that I haven't just fully, fully enjoyed. There's French sandwiches, pastries, there's a lobster bisque in a bread bowl. I mean, I could go on and on and on about this location. The quality is great and you guys gave it an 8.35 out of 10 and for me it's gonna get five out of five baguettes because the baguettes are two dollars here and that's a Disney feat in and of itself. Now that we've wrapped up everything else it is finally time to start with some table services and unfortunately our bottom table service is gonna be here in China at Nine Dragons Restaurant. Sadly, when the team was working on ranking these, there was really no question at what would land on the bottom for us. This spot is actually pretty decent for some Chinese food in a theme park, but it's just not as strong as any of the others that we're gonna talk about today. The quality is okay. It's not super great, but the service is always very friendly. Hands down for me, the best part of this restaurant has always been the service. I've always had wonderful service when I'm here, so absolutely big shout out to those cast members. It's not my favorite food in all of Disney World, especially not Epcot, but I cannot deny that they're so nice and so lovely when I'm here. You guys gave this one a 6.83 out of 10. I think that one's pretty appropriate. Um, unfortunately, I'm trying to think how, ooh, let's rank these on Mushu. I like Mushu. Sometimes Mulan hangs out here in the China Pavilion every day. She's here every day. So I'm gonna give this one one Mushu out of five. Sorry, Mushu and Nine Dragons. Now, next up on our list of table service, this one is not the worst, but it's fairly close. It's Coral Reef Restaurant over here by the Seas with Nemo and Friends. Let's head under the sea and talk about Coral Reef Restaurant. This restaurant serves up some seafood and amazing views by being surrounded by a live coral reef. Yeah, it's one of those Disney immersion restaurants that's pretty cool. Although it does weirdly remind me of like a rainforest cafe to a certain degree. The food has historically not been the best in Epcot. It's kind of compared to Red Lobster taste-wise, but if I'm eating in Disney World, I don't necessarily want Red Lobster personally. While the views are actually pretty cool, I just don't necessarily know that the food is worth it, but I loved it when I was 10 and I came with my family, so do with that what you will. It's a neat experience, might not be the best food, but it's a lot of fun and it's memorable for kids, so not all that bad. Over on All Ears, you guys gave it a 7.02 out of 10, which I think is pretty fair. For my personal ranking, I'm gonna give it three out of five fish. Yeah, three out of five fish because I remember it, I enjoyed the experience, and it's something I really hold dear to my heart, weirdly, as a memory with my family, but I also know that the food's not that great. Third from the bottom is gonna be La Hacienda de San Angel. Sorry, I'm trying really hard, I promise. This restaurant is an old world inspired Mexican eatery and it isn't really super discussed when you talk about table services here in Epcot, in my opinion. Uh, the food is pretty good, but it's a little bit pricey for what you get. Not always our favorite, but you can get some pretty stellar Epcot fireworks views if you get here at the right time. And it's just a good experience if you wanna have a nice view of the World Showcase Lagoon as well. You guys gave this one a 6.95 on all ears out of 10. I think I'm probably gonna give it two Epcot firework shows out of five. I think two is fair, and it's not that high on our list, so it makes sense. But we are staying in the Mexico Pavilion for our next table service because we are here at San Angel M. 
So without a doubt, I think this is one of the best experiences in Epcot, but especially when it comes to dining. You get to dine next to the Mayan ruins while you enjoy the Mexican inspired dining experience. The food is pretty good, but truly the best part is the location because you can see the boats from Grand Fiesta Tour going by. It is so beautiful and it's just a really fun, nice atmosphere. I've even been on um, dates with my husband here just because it's nice and it's fun and relaxing. You guys gave this one a 7.83 out of 10 over on all ears. I'm going to give it three out of five Grand Fiesta Tour boats. Next up for table services, we're going to chat about Tutto Italia because it's finally time to talk about some pasta. I've been waiting for this. So here in the Italy Pavilion, this restaurant often gets left out of the best conversations since it's kind of a middle of the road quality wise, especially when you're right next to Via Napoli, but it's pretty tasty. Now it does not compare to the other Italian offerings here on the list, but you guys seem to like it okay. You gave it a 7.71 out of 10. I'm probably gonna give it two, three, I'm gonna say three pasta dishes out of five because Honestly, you have pasta, you're gonna win my heart at least a little bit. All right, friends, we are back in the UK for our next table service, and you think, Emma, we've already been here before, but no, we came to the pub. Now it's time for dinner here at the Rose and Crown Dining Room. The Rose and Crown Dining Room is a great spot for comfort foods. You're gonna find some things like shepherd's pie, fish and chips, bangers and mash, lots of heavy and warm and perfect for winter night kind of food. Now, weirdly enough, I actually prefer the fish and chips at the Quick Service, Yorkshire County, which we've already talked about, but it's a really, really nice vibe. It's cozy, it's warm. It's a lot of things you might ask for, after a really long day when you're just kind of zoinked and you know that you really want to sleep well. Now we have eaten here before. You can see us try it out in our perfect day park hop when we go from Magic Kingdom to Epcot and it's pretty good. You guys gave this one a 7.95 out of 10. I want to give it a four and a half shepherd's pies out of five. Chefs de France is where you are going to find some pretty nice French cuisine, although not the nicest in this pavilion actually. You're gonna find things like French onion soup, escargot, ratatouille, baked mac and cheese, cheese plates. There's a lot of stuff here, friends. It's actually a pretty decent option. I have really enjoyed it in the past, um, but it's definitely not our favorite on the list. If you're looking to feel a little bit fancy, but you're not necessarily on that Monsieur Paul budget, this is gonna be a great option for you. You guys gave it 7.98 out of 10 over on the website. I'm actually gonna give it three and a half out of five escargos. Okay, so we've made it back to the front of the park to talk about the restaurant that we kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, and that is Space 220, and honestly, it's kind of out of this world. You know I had to do it, you were waiting on it, you were surprised I didn't do it at the lounge, I had to make the out of this world joke, I'm sorry. Now we did kind of mention a little bit earlier, but this is a pricey option for it to not be technically a fine dining experience. It is not fine dining the way that other options are here in Epcot, but the price can really get up there. It is $79 for adults for the prefix dinner and 30 for children, and honestly, that's pretty pricey, and that's before you even add drinks or the enhancements. The food is semi tasty. I mean, it's a nice experience. And our last experience here truly was delicious. We really enjoyed it. You can read all about our last experience here on the blog over on allyears.net. But that price, man. Now, I don't want to be a hater because I have never personally gotten to do this experience. Our teams helped me kind of cultivate this list and find out where this goes as far as rankings are. Um, but you guys gave it another 7.31 out of 10 over on All Ears. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna stick with what I gave the lounge, which is two and a half planets out of five. That feels very fair, unlike the pricing here. Now, if you've been hungry for something a little sweet and savory, we are here at the perfect table service, and that's Le Creperie de Paris. So right over here is La Creperie de Paris. This is where you're gonna find some galettes, some crepes, but it even has a prefix option if you wanna try sweet and savory things. What are you doing here? I keep running into you. I'm sorry. She's filming, I'm filming, it's fine. <laughs> We're filming. We're filming. He, she, we's fil filming. Well, now that we've all filmed, we can all talk about Le Creperie de Paris. It's nice and it's simple, but it's just not a must do compared to the other dining options here, although it is quite tasty. Over on All Ears, you guys gave this one an eight out of 10, but for my personal biased ranking, I think I'm gonna give it three and a half galettes out of five. 
Now we are switching pace a little bit from the sweeter options over to more savory ones here in the Japan Pavilion at Tampan Ido, but we're actually gonna kind of mention two right now because one you can't rank yet. So I'm here at the base of the Mitsukoshi restaurants where you're gonna find Tempan Ito. It's a really fun hibachi experience. It's actually really nice for bigger parties because you can sit at a six top. Um, it's nice, it's simple, it's nothing super, super fancy, especially compared to other dining options even in the Japan Pavilion, but it's pretty tasty and you guys gave it an eight out of 10 on the website. Now I have been to Tempan Ito. It's one of those places I went with my family as a kid. I really liked it. It's hibachi, so it's not super, super Super adventurous but you're guaranteed a pretty tasty meal here so I'm gonna give it three and a half shrimp fried rices so here in the Mitsukoshi restaurant area, you are gonna find Tampan Ido, which we just talked about, but you're also gonna find a brand new restaurant called Shiki Sai. Now just to add a little bit about Shiki Sai, it actually just opened and we just ate a ton of sushi and other food over here. I can't add it into the full ranking because it would kind of mess up everything else now that it's open, but if you wanna see our full review of this one, go check it out on the channel right now. It is incredible. All right, friends, we are back in Germany for the last time to talk about the Beer Garten restaurant. So here we are, this is the Beer Garten restaurant. This is a prefix dining option in the Germany pavilion. It's $49 for adults and 27 for kiddos. And honestly, when it comes to prefix dining, that's a pretty good price because you get a lot, a lot of food here. Chicken, potatoes, schnitzel, even more. It's a fun atmosphere too. They have live performances and everything. This potentially could be a hidden gem in my book. Now for our official rankings, you guys gave this an 8.01 out of 10 over on the website. I have not been here personally, so I'm gonna give it based on vibes and what I've seen and what my coworkers and what you guys have told me. I'm gonna give it three later Hosen out of five. For our next table service, we have made it over here to Akershus, the Royal Banquet Hall in Norway. So right here next to Frozen Ever After, you're gonna find Akershus Royal Banquet Hall. It is an amazing character dining spot where you can see princesses like Tiana, Snow White, Ariel, and Aurora for a fraction of Cinderella's royal table pricing. Now, right now it is operating on a family style dining, which isn't as good as previous years, but it's still pretty tasty and we really enjoyed it. If you wanna see a full review, we have one of course up on the channel now or over on the allears.net blog. For breakfast, you guys gave this an 8.53 out of 10 and a 7.52 out of 10 for dinner. I think that's pretty darn good, so I'm gonna give it four princesses out of five. All right, friends, we are back here in Morocco to talk about Spice Road Table, which is right here behind me. So this is Spice Road Table. It's a Mediterranean small plate table service, and it is amazing. Now, they do have a lot of options, but I can really speak very highly of the house-made hummus fries, the pomegranate chili crispy cauliflower, Flower. My mom loves the grape leaves. There's a lot of really, really good options here, especially the non-spread as well. It's good, it's really light, very flavorful. This is a great meal if you're not super, super hungry but you wanna try something new. There's also a really easy walk-up option. I've only made a reservation for here once. Every other time I've been able to walk up and it's not been a problem. You guys gave this one an 8.39 out of 10 over on allears.net. I'm gonna give it five hummus fries out of five hummus fries because I'm that partial to it. Now it is finally time for the best restaurant in the Italy Pavilion, my personal favorite, and one that I've been obsessed with lately, and that's Via Napoli. So Via Napoli is right here next to Pizza Al Taglio. It is incredible, friends. I love the quality of this restaurant. All of the food options that I personally have had have been so amazing, and even if they're simple, the taste and quality is really there. My personal favorite drink currently in all of Walt Disney World even lives here, the Limoncello Mule. It's so delicious. The Quattro Formaggio Pizza, the Prosciutto e Melon Pizza is incredible. Plus, I even love the freshness of the tortellini. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. I think this restaurant is such high quality, especially compared to some of the other options here in Epcot. And even if it's not necessarily reinventing the wheel with some of their items, it's absolutely incredible. Also, I have to say, who doesn't like pizza? That's one reason the reservations are so hard to get here. Pizza's kind of hard to mess up. Even if it's not the best pizza, you know you're gonna at least like it a little bit, but when you have great quality pizza, the reservations are gonna go. You guys gave this one an 8.05 out of 10 over on the website. I'm gonna give it five pizza slices out of five pizza slices because I love it and I bring my family here as often as I can. 
Next up on our list for table services, we are here at Canada's one and only dining location where you can sit down, Le Cellier. Now it doesn't look as pretty, it is undergoing some construction right now, but this is where you're going to find Le Cellier Steakhouse here in the Canada Pavilion. And I would argue these are some of the best steaks in all of Walt Disney World. Now not everybody on all ears totally agrees with us, but we are still pretty big fans of the spot. And I know our friends over at Disney Food Blog agree with us. Now with great steaks, beef tartare, the Canadian cheese soup. I love this spot, it's really nice. It's actually a little bit romantic, so it's great for an Epcot date night, but it can get a little pricey, so don't ignore that part. You guys gave this one a 7.54 out of 10. I really love it, so I'm gonna give it a four Canadian cheese soups out of five, and I've always had a really wonderful experience here. So thank you Le Cellier for wonderful steaks and cheese. Now we are finally getting into our top three, the best of the best of the table services. So we've come inside the Land Pavilion to check out Garden Grill. Now I personally think that Garden Grill Restaurant is the prettiest ballerina in Epcot. Do you get that? Because the restaurant spins? Well, if you didn't know, the restaurant spins and I made a bad ballerina joke. It's an incredible character dining option. Uh, you can see Farmer Mickey, Chip and Dale, and even Pluto when you're here for breakfast. It is a prefix meal that is currently served family style, but we have really, really enjoyed it in the past. If you want, you can go check out a full review over on allears.net of the breakfast options here. You guys gave it a 9.2 out of 10 for breakfast, which is huge and you gave it an 8.4 out of 10 for dinner which honestly is pretty impressive too for me i'm gonna give my personal ranking for garden grill five farmer mickeys out of five farmer mickeys because i love farmer mickey all right for number two we are talking about the first of two fine dining experiences here in epcot and one right behind me is called monsieur paul now, when it comes to fine dining, this restaurant is in a league of its own here in Epcot. There's only one other restaurant at the same caliber as this one. It is a fine dining French cuisine restaurant starting at $195 per adult for a four course meal. Now, it's actually almost hard to compare this one and the next one we're going to talk about to the other restaurants here in Epcot because this is a true um, fine dining experience. You can't really compare the experience that you have here and the quality of the food to anything else, but luckily Breed Love and Quincy both have been able to attend and you can see the video all about their full review of Monsieur Paul up on the channel right now. You guys gave this an 8.31 out of 10 on the channel and no question I'm giving this one 5 out of 5 Pauls. Now for our number one restaurant in all of Epcot hands down no question for us we are here back in the Japan Pavilion for Takumi Tei. Now, honestly, if you have been in a rush throughout Epcot, you might not have even really noticed this area. If you're facing the Mitsukoshi store doors, it's gonna be here to the right, kind of tucked in the corner, and that's where you're gonna find Takumi Tei, which is one of the fine dining experiences here in Epcot. It is one of the few that is truly worth the price. We cannot talk highly enough about the quality here, the service here. It was really incredible. Now I will say it is a true fine dining experience. So it is around $250 per adult. However, we have actually had the privilege to go here. You can actually see Quincy and Breed Love's review up on the channel right now of Takumi Tei. It is a bucket list goal for me and hopefully one day I'll get to go and hopefully one day you will too. Do you think this deserves to be the top? Personally, I do and I daydream about the sushi here. Overall, you guys gave this one an 8.33 out of 10 up on the website. There's no question for me, this one's gonna get a five out of five sushi pieces because just, just go watch their review. It looks incredible. It's raining and we finished on time before the rain started. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch my video where I rank all of the restaurants in Magic Kingdom. Bye!